six months road tax is £137.50 and 12 months is £250. Hi, my name is Barry Crampton. Today I'm going to show you around our Range Rover Evoque. Then I'll take you for riding it, but first I'll tell you a little bit more about it. It's a 2.2 SD4 Prestige Lux. It's all-wheel drive, 2,200cc, 2011 on a 61 plate, has done 71,434 miles. The fuel economy, urban 35.8 miles per gallon, extra urban 49.6 miles per gallon, and combined is 43.5 miles per gallon. Has a nought to 60 time of eight seconds, a top speed of 121 miles per hour out of a 190 brake horsepower, 16 valve, four cylinder engine. A uh, really good spec, car will park itself. Uh, it's got a pan roof finished in Fuji white with black leather. Uh, on the front here, we've got the high pressure headlamp wash. Uh, it's also got the 360 cameras. Um, one of them's not working at the moment and we're just trying to decide whether it's worth replacing it. Uh, the 350 pounds uh, each camera and putting the price of the car up or selling the car cheaper at the moment in my opinion the uh, accessory you never use it um, so we, we're going to price the car cheaper but there's one there's one camera not working uh, and if you decide you can't live without it it's, it's another 350 pounds anyway that's that out of the way as far as i know uh, on the way up here that's the only thing I could find wrong with it. Car drives great. It's got a load of other great accessories which are really useful. That one, not so much. The other thing is you've, you've got front and rear parking sensors anyway. Um, the reversing camera works, which, which is a, you know, a, a major bonus. Um, so it, it's a, a great car for the money. So we've got the plastic wheel arch protectors around the, the wings there. Um, these 20 inch horseshoe alloys, the vents in the side here, again, the plastic sill protector and door protector, mud flaps, power folding door mirrors. We've got the full pan roof, which is a fantastic uh, accessory and changes the whole interior of the car. Um, the, the, the whole dynamic inside, the way it feels, nice light, uh, roomy and airy inside. We've got keyless lock, keyless entry. You see there, power folding door mirrors. You just, as long as you've got the key on your uh, person, as soon as you touch across those two there, as I did then, it, uh, it locks the door and folds the door mirrors in. And you come back to the car, put your hands behind the, hander, behind the door handle, pull open, that's it. So it's a, a reasonably easy system. On the back here, we've got power open, power closed tailgate. The hard rear uh, load cover there, split folding rear seats, nice flat load area if you've got a pet or anything, not too too far to jump, a nice flat area for them to uh, to sit in or <laughs> lounge about. Um, let's see, there we go. There's the reversing camera. Got the integrated rear tailgate spoiler and the rear parking sensors, and also the the twin. Uh, exhaust uh, tips at the back there. I'm not so sure how this video is going to come out today. It's a white car and we're just surrounded by fog or mist or, or whatever. It's white everywhere. So uh, not much of a contrast, I'm afraid. Not, not, <laughs> not as much as usual anyway. So in the back here, it's uh, it's absolutely like new. You've just got to, if you're an adult, you've just got to put the rear headrest up um, so as it doesn't stick right in your back or force your head forward. Meridian speakers, great sound system. I'll, I'll remember to demonstrate it. Got this lovely leather with the contrast um, stitching. And then the rear armrest here, little cubby hole there and two cup holders. It's, I've got my seat forward, but I, I could still drive quite comfortably. I, I wouldn't be crippled when I got out. 
Um, so enough room, enough room. It's certainly enough room for children who are probably going to be sat in the back or adults perhaps for a short journey. I'll just take you for a ride in it. That's the uh, Range Rover key, as I said before. Keyless entry, keyless start. So foot on the brake, press the, oh, I better get ready to turn that down. I'll just show you the, the cameras. Uh, you know, th this car has got some really fantastic uh, options. It'll park itself. Okay, so we've put the car in drive. You've got the parking switch over here, press, press that. It says on the dash, park assistant searching. Then we move forward, looking for a space big enough. And it is a fairly tight space, this, as you'll be able to see from the uh, drone above. Now, it says park assist uh, found, park assist drive forward. Hopefully not too far. There you go, park assist stop, select reverse. And here we go, I'll try and keep out of the, the way here. And as I say, it is a, a tight spot. I'm always worried about the alloys as well. So. Select drive. And all you have to do is just cover the brake. That's it. Perfect. You've got, that's the best invention in recent years, I would say. The blind spot warning light, anything coming up that you can't see, uh, orange light illuminates there and, uh, and warns you not to pull out, not to pull out in front of a motorbike or, or something else that's, that's gonna take the side of your car. So that's fantastic. The, the cameras, um, I hate waste, and there's so much in the motor trade, it's just unbelievable. And, and the, the biggest problem is, if we, we go to extra features here, wow, that's brilliant, Buzz. <laughs> right, so, okay, home menu, obviously click something wrong, extra features, and then you've got ambient lighting, well, ambient lighting, biggie, waste of money. <laughs> waste of money now. My, my fingers don't work, sorry. Uh, so we'll go back to extra features and then we go on to cameras. And you can see here, there's a, a camera over there in the front. There's, that's your reversing camera. That's another one. It's, it can be handy when you're pulling out at junctions, but honestly, by the time you've switched your cameras on, you've seen what, how long it's taken me to switch it on. By the time you've, you've put your cameras on, then whatever's come has either hit you or, or gone by. Now, you, I mean, you just can't, you can't tell really what it is, what, you, what you're looking at. Um, and that camera there, we, we had one a, a couple of weeks ago. Four cameras had gone, four cameras at 350 pound plus, plus fitting. And you know, there's just, these days, there's just not the margin in cars to, to put four cameras in. So sooner or later, and these these cameras, bearing in mind, they're outside. <laughs> 365 days of the year, they're outside. They're in red hot sun. They're in icy cold weather. They're, they're getting lashed with rain. Now these cameras in here, these GoPros, they're action cameras, and they're, they're meant to go underwater and so on. They break if you look at them. If they get too hot, they switch off. If they get too cold, they switch off. Um, sometimes they won't start at all. Sometimes the, the SD card isn't recognised. And there's all sorts of problems. And these are kept in a camera bag, <laughs> not, not stuck on a car outside 365 days a year. So that's it. That's the problem. There's a, there's a camera missing there. The, the price we're selling it at is like that. If you want the camera, we'll fit it by all means, but it's, it's another 350 quid. So. If it was me, I'd rather have the 350 quid than, uh, than the camera on the car, which I would never use. I, I, I've had loads of cars with it on, and I don't think I've used it once. So that's the cameras. 
you know, if, if it was a safety issue, we'd get it done straight away. No, no questions asked. If it was an advisor and an MOT, we, we'd get it done. But that's, that's just stupid. Um, car's got a TV as well, let's just see. All right, so that's the radio. So if we put it on so TV, there you go. TV, um, let's see. Now it's got dual screen. I'll just show you here. So we'll just put sat nav on there. Video. So we'll put it on slow motion video. I've got to agree sat nav um, before. I'll just check. So there you go. From this side, the driver can only see the sat nav, but the passenger can watch the TV. So, you know, that's good. Um, let's get the TV off. Anyway, hopefully that will have gone off now. So service history. Um, I haven't got, um, for some reason, uh, we've not listed the actual dealers, but um, 3rd of 10, 2012 at 8,120 miles. 17th of 9, 2013 at 9,178 miles. 10th of 9, 2014 at 19,247 miles. 27th of the 8th, 2015, 28,538 miles. 31st of the 8th, 2016, at 38,058 miles. 13th of the 2nd, 2019, 56,735 miles. 20th of the 6th, uh, 2020, at 66,294 miles. And what does I say it's done? 71,434 miles. So uh, it's just over 12 months since it was serviced. It's only done 5,000 miles. So that's it, we'll get going. Uh, funny day today. <laughs> it's, uh, as, I, as I said before, when I was videoing the outside, it's brightened up a little bit. It's supposed to be sunny today, but it is only quarter to nine and we are high up. So we're in, we're in all the mist and uh, it's a white car and it's white behind. So. I don't think it's going to look its best, but it's it's very nice. It's very nice and clean outside, nice and clean inside. And say that Meridian speakers, which are, are brilliant, you perhaps be able to see the uh, light there in the mirrors. And uh, it's got the the Evoque. Um, it may look like a fashion accessory, but it's it's to be fair, it's one of the, the best in its class, if not the best in its class, uh, and certainly for size. It'll wade through 500 millimetres of water, um, which is 20 inches. And uh, so, you know, that, that's, that's not too shabby. Um, I think, fr from memory, obstacle clearance is 215 uh, millimeters at the front and 235 at the back. I, I could be wrong, but anyway, so it, you, you're well up off the ground too. We've got electric memory seats. Here we go, three position memory seats there. Um, height and reach adjustable multifunction steering wheel. You hear my camera equipment rattling about in the back. Um, back's absolutely full. Mist just starting to clear there. The farmer's made a mess of that road. Uh, it was so hot last week. I think where he's been turning in and out with it in the tractor, it's ripped the tarmac up, which uh, just goes to show you what it was like, really, how treacherous it, it, it was. The, uh, the last time I remember it being that hot was in uh, 1976. And uh, I was a bit of a hooligan then, and uh, there's, there's an S bend at, at Kirkham Prison. And as I got to the bend at Kirkham Prison, I, I realised there was something not quite right. I leaned over on my bike, and the tarmac had melted, and I low sided right the way off and, and towards Kirkham Prison. But that's what <laughs> that's what being young does for you. This guy looks like he's coming a bit fast. He's, uh, oh, it's a lady. He's 
sheep on the road up there. So we've got Satnav. There you go, Satnav. The grey. Looks like it switched the TV back on. You might might be able to switch and see the TV. So I'll probably knock that off completely. That's your parking button. Switch that on. I'll, I'll, if I get time later, I'll do a video of, of how it works. Move forward till it tells you. You just cover the brake. Anyway, I'll, I'll try and do one and cut, cut it in. I'm going to switch that off for, for the time being so you can't see the telly from, from that camera. Oops. Not a good day for animals in the countryside today. I have to say there's, uh, there's a lot on the road. Hence, extra careful around here. So... Let's just see if I do that. We've got power folding door mirrors. High pressure headlamp wash. We've got heated seats here. And again, this, even Range Rover and Land Rover these days, moving towards silly iPads and, and switches that do like five things instead of just one. Um, so yeah, there's your, there you go. You don't have to look at the road. You can switch your heated seats on you, without taking your eyes off the road. Dead easy. You know where it is. And we've also got a, a heated front screen. The, the, the best accessory that should be standard in all cars. Instead, they put, you know, I, I can't understand. I mean, that, that 360 camera is an extra cost option. But um, I, I wish manufacturers or manufacturers should be made to publish like fuel economy figures except they're mostly all lies or very difficult to achieve but what they should do they should put they should be made to publish the price of a car new and then the price if you had to make that car up of spares from them they should publish the the price it would cost um you know give you some idea of running costs really and and what it's going to be like to repair stuff if you have to because uh i think i think it would be scary as i say you can imagine this this car we check our prices daily um to make sure we're offering the best value and we work on very very low mileage mileage very very low margins uh, we work from a porter cabin, we try and sell good cars, um, we try and make sure that they're all prepped before they go out. We do our best to do it, but you, you know, you can't always do it. We're not greedy. These, <laughs> these just two of us and, and Lance and Valata, uh, we don't want to be millionaires, we just want to live like one. And, you know, they're, they're really good value, but if you have to do that um, and start replacing cameras that nobody's going to look at then it, it you know it, it is just a waste put the things there so um, I, you, it, the decision's up to you we've got this um, rust aluminium dash or insets in the dash and round the gear tunnel that's all in good condition no key rash that I can see a couple of little marks there but nothing uh, nothing that you would notice really just a, a nice vehicle I'm just gonna have to put my shades on here the Sun's coming out and it's quite low down made hard work of that um, the Sun's coming out over there I I might I might be able to do some drone shots of the outside of the vehicle. In my opinion, it all it gives a better perspective of a vehicle than just from the side and so on. And especially uh, when I can manage to fly around. So we do 
really well with uh, Land Rovers and uh, we're trying our best to buy and sell British or as many as we can. In my opinion, Range Rover is the best vehicle, well Range Rover and Jaguar, I like Jaguar. Best vehicles on the road, made in Britain. Not necessarily British owned, but uh, keeping our workforce employed. sure with it. It's just a well there is there is a noise coming from the back but I'm not sure whether it's my camera equipment rubbing or banging on the inside of the back seat. As soon as there's a safe place to stop I'm just gonna uh, have a look. Right it must be all Right on a, on a straight there. And then make sure all the doors are open. Oh, umbrella. Oh. And shift that, it's still going to make a noise that. Ah, I think that was probably it. Back parcel shelf on clipped in properly. So, oh, the, the sun's come out now. <laughs> I, I might, I've done all my, my video. So it's only, only five to nine. Um, I uh, I might actually go back and do the video again. The trouble is that now at this time, uh, there's so many people come up when you're stopping every two seconds, which is only to be expected. That it's a lovely place. Why wouldn't people come? Rabbits. Not sure what that is, a young pheasant. Nice to drive. You've got paddle shift on the steering wheel there, uh, changing down on the left hand side, up on the right hand side. You can just click into sport there. You've got your terrain response there. <laughs> I, I have a mental block of <laughs> what Richard Hammond called, I, I try and remember every time. Um, swamp minefield Christmas Mexico that's it it's a lovely day nice car especially for these surroundings and, and this type of road you don't realize just how rough 
this road is. You might do tomorrow because I'm probably going to be <laughs> videoing a BMW. <laughs> and you'll be able to see how much I enjoy driving BMWs with M Sport suspension and run flat tyres. out of this big pothole there. It's a nice car. As I say this, I'll, I'll just show you how much difference it makes with the blind There you go. Probably can't see my grey hair as much now. Just watch out for this bend. Quite a sharp one. People do tend to fly around here. So anyway, that's that's the that's the blind. Great car. Over there, you've got, if you press that button there, how lucky was that guy just uh, coming out? <laughs> right across the road, just as you come round the corner. He's in a good car though. Go down there, click vehicle setup, trip computer, display settings. We'll go to the vehicle setup, click. And there we've got blind spot, monitor on, we can switch speed warning on, alarm sensors, cruise eco data. Now we want to knock cruise eco data off because when you when you switch cruise control, a big colored display comes onto your uh, onto your dash something you the you know co2 you've used or something like that or saved and it's distracting no need for it to be fair if you want to have a look how much you can you're doing you're that interested you can always uh, look at your journey afterwards so there you go in easy entry and exit that's switched on. Two stage unlocking. You're in a car park, you don't want some I mean, homicidal maniac jumping in the passenger seat when you open your doors. You open your door, your driver's door opens, and you have to press it twice to open all the other doors. Audible lock warning when you get out, so you know it's locked. Drive away locking and headlamp delay so when you pull up at home at night and you want to 
be able to see, get your key in, see where you're going. Headlights stay on. Convoy. Freshly sheared sheep there. Looks like the sun's gone in again. <laughs> so we may have to uh, put up with the video I've done. But I don't think it'll be my best by far. Nice campers there. On the dash also, left hand side you've got your speedo. In the centre your information display. So you can you can change all that from here. If you click in the end of the indicator stalk. Um, it's average speed at the bottom there, average fuel used, instantaneous fuel, distance to empty. Mileometer, odometer, trip counter, average speed, I think that's where we were before, weren't we? So those, those that's all the info. Click back there, click back to the, again, just your normal gauges, your engine coolant temperature gauge on the left hand side, and your fuel gauge on the right, you've got digital speedo, which I always find better than a, an analog one really, not as pleasing to look at, but uh, I'll uh, let this chap come past, and uh, if you don't report me, I'm going to have a drink of coffee. Well, let me just, I'll put the handbrake on, how about that? I'm going to drive back because there's I've, I've done what people do to me and, and just stop there where there's a there's a big a big rock for the other guy to ruin his alloys on. There we go. He's just going to meet somebody around there now. Probably right at that bend. So anyway, um, I'll finish the test drive there. Lovely car. So great equipment. The Meridian speakers, uh, for a start, if you like music, I mean, you just can't really get any better. They're, they're fantastic. You see there, actually, that's picking up stuff in my blind spot there are only bushes and the, the railings but it's still picking them up and, and at least you can see how it works um just just a nice car and uh, in my opinion the the best of this size four-wheel drive i think it's the best looking i think it's a, a with a land rover technology i think it's a proper four-wheel drive and not a pretend one um and when you do need, you know, when you need clearance, when you need to go off road, um, when you need to wade through a, a flood, then it's um, 
this is going to do it. So that's it. Thanks for watching.